I'm Ben Fogel, and I'm about to set sail to live the life of a North Sea fisherman. But this will be no free ride. I'm here to take on this most dangerous of jobs. You know, if you're working in the ocean, that's just, that is how cruel it is. Hauling thousands of fish from the sea and working without rest for up to 24 hours at a time. The thing I'm starting to realise is there's absolutely nowhere to escape on board. I've been on some big adventures, but I've got a feeling nothing could prepare me for how tough this is going to be. Setting sail on three very different boats. I want to find out just what draws these men back to the sea day after day, each time putting their lives on the line. Can you get it over there, mate? From the camaraderie of the trawlermen. Uh, it's better than sitting in an office all day, though, you know? Sending emails back and forth to your pals. To the crew of the prawn boats, hunting their elusive prey. Yeah, it looks a bit heavy. Maybe, maybe not. And the loneliness of the crab fishermen. You're missing a finger. Welcome to the North Sea. Oh. I get the feeling it's going to be one hell of a ride. The rugged northeast coast of Scotland. For centuries, fishermen have sailed out of the ports and harbours clinging onto this remote corner of Britain. Yeah, this is where it all happens, the North Sea. But coming up here in January, so what am I thinking? <laughs> the only way to describe what I'm seeing now is it just looks ominous. It just looks bleak and miserable out there. Huge waves just crashing next to that lighthouse over there. I've taken on some real challenges in the past, rowing the Atlantic, crossing the Arabian Desert. But this is going to be a completely different task. Over the last 15 years, over 250 British fishermen have lost their lives at sea, making it one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. Turning back now. Britain once had one of the world's biggest fishing fleets. A century ago, there were over 100,000 fishermen. What's left today are just 12,000 men and a handful of specialised fishing ports that ship our fish to markets around the world. My journey starts here at the largest fishing port in Britain. Peter Head. Over a million boxes of fish passed through here in the last 12 months. And this is the vessel I'm due to be sleeping, fishing, and working on for the next seven days. The Rose Bloom, a 24 meter trawler with a crew on the hunt for North Sea haddock and cod. Sandy? The skipper of the boat is Sandy McClemon. Hey. You'll be Ben, yeah? I'm, I'm Ben. Nice to meet you. And nice to meet you as well. Can come I, aboard, come, I, come, come aboard. This is bigger than I imagined. It's probably bigger than what you rode across the Atlantic. I in. tell you. But it'll, uh, it'll move just the same, I'm afraid. Can you show me around the rest of the boat? Yeah. Introduce well, me to the crew. Not much space down here. And Sandy's got a welcome pack waiting for me in the cabin that I'll be sharing with three other crew members. Is this all my gear? This is your gear, so we're hoping that you're going to... Uh, it looks very new. It's still packaged. We're hoping you're going to oh, need... no, I'm not... I... You're going to need this more than what you need this. Yeah. Because if you're in these, then I'm doing my job. If you're in here, I'm not doing my job very well. This is going to be hard work, isn't it? I hope so. I hope so. It's 3.30 in the afternoon and almost time to set sail. Like many fishing boats in Scotland, this is a family operation, and Sandy's mum's here to say farewell. Love you. Right. Let her, let her go, Mike. Thank you very much. 
Nearly 500 boats used to land their catch in Peterhead. Now we're one of just 80. We're heading 12 hours into the North Sea. And alongside us will be our sister ship, Boy John. Working together, these two boats will hunt for fish, pulling a net between them through the water. To pay the fuel and other running costs of the boats, we need to land at least 900 boxes of fish between us. I feel a bit like the first day at school. I haven't really got a clue what's going on. If I put my hand in there, I'd go straight over. I'd be a bit out of my depth, if I'm to be honest. I wanted to find out why my skiff has chosen this life, despite the obvious dangers. Was I? It must have been. Sandy's must career as a fisherman began at just 16 on his father's fishing trawler, the Heather Bloom. It was built in 1992, and then, uh, sadly, tragically, it was uh, it was lost in 1994. Four night away there, and we can stack on a on an obstruction on the seabed, and the the waves just swamp the swamp the trawler from the stern. All the crew of the Heather Bloom found themselves fighting for their lives. There was six of us there, and five of us were saved. And but my father, he was sadly lost. So. It was all over so fast before we even realised there was there was anything gone wrong. You know, it happened so fast. Well, I just really rocked our whole world. You know, that was our family unit was destroyed. It was just it was just devastation really for us. Tell me to stop if I'm I'm being too prying, but do, if I'm being too prying, but do, do you not resent the ocean for that for taking your father? That's how cruel the ocean is. You know, if you're working in the ocean, that's just. That is how cruel it is. Just a few hours into life on board the Rose Bloom, and I'm trying to get some sleep. So I do feel a bit apprehensive. I'm glad I'm on board now, but I've still got the unknown. Yeah, I will try and sleep. I feel a long way from home here, and we are. 150 nautical miles, to be exact, off the coast of Scotland, closer to Norway than we are to London. These are the fishing grounds selected by our skipper, and it's time to deploy our nets for the first time on this trip. I was in my bed about five minutes ago. I'm now out on the deck in the middle of the North Sea with cranes and wheels and pumps and nets and smells and wind and seasickness, it's all, it's all completely overwhelming, if I must be honest. I can see how over 200 British fishermen a year are injured doing their job. I'm still getting used to the dangers when there's an emergency that seems to worry even these experienced fishermen. Duck on the bottom. Yeah, I'm biking like they're not ready, so if a joint comes out here, we can put that rope onto that side of the net, drum. It's like a giant anchor. And I don't really understand what's going on. Everyone seems to be rushing around, but we are stuck. There's, we, we, we can't go anywhere. We can't chop it. This is slowing the whole thing. Do no speeding up. See how quickly things can go wrong. So we don't just risk losing the fish, but the net, and worst case scenario, the boat. The whole crew of both boats have to work together to free the net. 
The first drama of this voyage showed me how quickly things can go wrong out here. So we've come out of this OK, compared to what could have happened. But in a matter of minutes, the atmosphere on the boat swings from fear to jubilation. Ben, what kind of fish is that? Cod. Rock on, Tommy. Good cod, yeah? You happy? Happy, Skip? Oh, I am now, aye. Can we have got any more? Up the Jilson! I estimate a couple of hundred boxes, Captain. Yeah. Not joking, but this is what fishermen waited five all year to see a hole like this. The skipper is literally skipping around the boat. I'm going to be honest, my heart's kind of sinking because that's my evening gone. Pull away, man! <sighs> ton after ton of cod, haddock, and the most valuable of all, mugfish. I'll keep us busy for quite a few hours. See the size of the monkfish here, look. Huge. Beautiful, eh? It's a fine sight for any fisherman, but now, below deck, the real work begins. The gutting room. Working next to Sandy's brother, Andrew, I'll be processing the thousands of fish we've just brought on board. He's been a good surgeon, Ben. To keep the fish fresh, we have to gut it while still out at sea. It's a gruesome addition to the job of fishing. Oh, Funny enough, this is the first time no one wanted to do what I was off to do. Away. Often I get people a bit jealous wanting to come and do the trips I do, but this is, no bad, this is the one unanimously that no one wants to do. Where's the lingo? Uh, it's better than sitting in an office all day, though, you know? Sending emails back and forth to your, uh, your pals. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm fine. Andrew might have a point, but the smell and movement down here is overpowering and making me sick to the stomach. I'm just going to stick my head up some air really quickly. Uh, just to go and see where we are. Just to see where we are. Ah, uh, OK. I'm just going to check the skipper's taking the boat in the right direction. Ah, OK, right, right. <laughs> hey, what are you thinking of the game? I love it. Great. 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 Who? Dewey. Dewey. <laughs> it's pretty disgusting, I tell you. The thing I'm starting to realise is there's absolutely nowhere to escape on board. <laughs> it's practically worse out here, but... Whoa. Those guys were saying this beats a nine to five office job. At this particular moment, I wouldn't mind being sat behind a computer. Right, time to go back down below. Right. I know that if I lose too much face in front of these guys, it's game over. Okay. I've never, got, I've never done this many fish, you know. No. Very overpowering, the smell, is it? You could say that. That last load of fish took hours to gut, and now we're back on deck for the next haul. This cycle will be repeated until the boats are full. This is no nine to five. There's no time for sleep. And 32 hours into the trip, I've slept for just six of them. I was feeling a bit queasy. Well, you know, it's relentless, isn't it? It's not just, uh, this isn't the only time we have to do this. We have to do this for the next week. 
non-stop, pretty much, day and night. I suppose it's too early to say how much use he is at the moment. That's one thing about a fishing boat, there's not much room for passengers, so he's just going to have to get stuck in and get on with it, really. I'm already struggling and only too aware that this is just the start of my North Sea journey. After this, I've got two more testing and very different trips to come. What if I don't deserve this? If you want to see uh, the power, look at that. I really don't want to go down there. Two days into my North Sea Odyssey, awake and on deck again. With over 30 tons of freshly caught fish in the hold, the skipper's happy, which means our first proper breakfast. Get the good of your black pudding when you're getting a chance. Black pudding. I'll come straight back up. They do lattes. At least you get a latte, that's no problem. <laughs> you heard me. At least you get a latte. <laughs> it's my job aboard here to hear everything that's going on. That's my job. The banter goes on downstairs in the galley, where all the crew take it in turns to cook. I was only 40 when I started this trip, but now uh, I think I'm 45. It's all young. I did think you looked older, Luke. Still dies his hair now, and look, I caught him in a microwave. Every time he dries, he stands and goes there in the microwave. Enough of the chat. It's time to get fishing again and make some money. OK, Michael! It looked like a lot of fish to me. They're having a fag. Maybe that's a good sign. <laughs> The crew's wages depend on how much fish is caught and how quickly they can process it. A three-day trip like this could earn them up to £1,000 each. That's what you're here for. Empty boxes won't pay the mortgage. Leave it up, leave it up, quick! Up, 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 up. This is an operation geared to make maximum profit. As the new boy, I'm expected to pull my weight and look after the expensive equipment as effectively as the rest of the crew. Oh, you're doing fine, Ben. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. Yeah, that's all right. Whoa! That hydraulics is exactly the same as you're touching a woman. Just gently, really gently. gently. Jesus, my hydraulics will be in bits. Yeah? That's fine, Ben. Thank you. <laughs> I hasten to point out my wife is nothing like a 10 ton <laughs> reel on a trawler. <laughs> but it needs the same respect. Yeah. The trust is the big thing because you're playing with you're playing with people's lives, with with winches and L lives such. and livelihoods. Check out the last of that big cord. Oh all stored joy! Properly. Yes, skipper. Meanwhile, below deck, it's all go in the packing room. This is the bank vault of the boat where the fish is sorted and iced, ready for market. You wouldn't go into a boot shells and buy a steak if you'd watched them kick it about like a football. No. I'm down here with Duncan, who's been working on the boat for the last four years. Do you remember the first time you went to sea? Oh, yes. Really hated it. Hated the thought of it. That's why I don't want my children to do it, and my son. But I'm lucky enough, my, my son's he's a, he's a brainy boy, yeah? He, if he said he really wanted to do this, would you encourage him? No. No, no I would take him away in a very, a very bad week of weather. <laughs> and I would make him work. Every time I was up, he was up, and I would show him how hard and how dangerous this job is. So is this what you want to do for the next 40 years? I can see what he means. A few days is hard enough. Some people are just cut out for a job like this. You coming back next week, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. 
just remember, next time you're having a big swanky party down in London, give us a phone. We'll yeah, 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 I will. We'll show you how to party with. Thanks. That's one thing we're all good at. I bet you are. Same again. Just push them in. We're now 48 hours into the voyage. I'm exhausted, but I feel like I've turned a corner. It's earning my place as one of the team and learning how the crew look out for each other that's made this trip bearable. Being a Scottish, look at that. Do you ever have mince and tarties at home? Do you ever have mince and tarties or mince and rice at home? No, I think that's a Scottish thing. Do you know? No, savoury mince. Yeah, but you'd probably mix it together and make a cottage pie. If you had, if you had the mince and the potatoes, but not just uh, potatoes like that. No, Am I the not. first Englishman you've had on your, on your boat? No. Any other Englishman? <coughs> no, not that. First Englishman I've ever seen, you would say. The good news is that this Englishman is heading back to Peterhead early. These boats fish until they're full, so we could have been at sea for anything up to another week. But we've caught so many fish in the past 24 hours that the skipper's about to point our nose back home. Still, turns out there's just about time for one last haul. He's fishy anyway, I'll give him that. That's as much nice hauls in a row as I've seen in a long time. Huh? Can I call you a John <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I think I just received my first compliment of the trip. He said he can't call me a Jonah. A Jonah's supposed to bring bad luck to a trawler. Ben Cod. Is that? Ben Cod. There you go. Skipper's calling me Ben Cod. All right, heave up the ropes. The biggest statement of trust the skipper can put in me is safe till last, when Sandy puts me in charge of steering his million-pound boat back home. I spent the last couple of days feeling continuously nauseous. I had had a, a secret vomit just before. So I'm now, what is it, 10.30 or so, and we're we're basically racing to get to market. The lights of Peterhead Harbour. Sanctuary, safety, and the promise of a proper bed at last. Definitely found that a tough one. Hard, hard job but um, I'm sure in a few hours' time I'll, I'll look back through rose-tinted glasses. Oh, it was easy. The final job is to unload our hard-earned catch. Between our two boats, there are over 1,300 boxes of fish that we've worked night and day to catch, gut and ice. If you listen carefully, you can hear a bed in the palace a tail going, Ben, Ben. As it goes to auction, this haul could reach anything between 50 to 80,000 pounds. From here to there, that's it for a day and a half, eh? That's what you've done, look, well. And as the buyers mark which boxes they've taken, this fish will be on dinner plates around the country by tomorrow evening. It is nice to see that fish being rewarded for what it's worth, really, you know? Because the, the men went through a lot of work in a short period of time. Uh, the men, uh, me included. The men in Fogel. My time on Rosebloom has come to an end. But my journey's not over just yet. I've got another type of fishing to experience and another trawler to sail on. That's what we're after. That's what we're after. 
but this time it will be a very different trip. I think we'll just call it a day. Enough's enough. I've survived my trip spent hunting for haddock and cod. Bloody hell. But there's another type of North Sea fishing that I want to experience. It will mean going out with a smaller crew as they comb the floor of the huge North Sea looking for an elusive, high-value catch. To give them their continental name, they're langoustines. The locals just call them prawns. It's a dangerous mission, with the nets often catching and tearing on the seabed. But it's a risk worth taking. The prawns are worth £82 million a year to the fishermen from this part of the world. I'm going hunting for these prawns on board the trawler Pleiades with skipper Gary Hepburn. Gary? Hi, Ben. Ah, hey, found the right boat. How are you? You made it there. I did. Hey guys, hey, hey. I'm Ben Yor. Nice Alan. Alan. Alan, nice to meet you, Alan. I know I'm Steve. Steve. Lloyd. Lloyd, very nice to meet you. There's only four of us, well, five in total. That, oh, we need I, you. I'm thinking a lot of work. We need you. Need you. Diamond died, waits for no man. We set sail in the dark, just as most people are going to bed. We'll be out here working until the weather turns, or we're fully loaded with prawns. That could take anything up to a week. We're sailing into the world's biggest fishing grounds for this type of prawn. When we arrive, we send out a net that combs the sea floor, hopefully finding the prawns that could mean a big payday for the skipper and his crew. We don't need the tons of fish we saw on Rosebloom, just a few good hauls of this high value crop to make it all worthwhile. But as the first net comes up, even I can see that it's not a good start to the voyage. No use, no use. I'm just missing a toilet seat in the old boot. <laughs> I saw some tin cans in there. Aye. Is it nets deployed again? No, there's some old Wellington boots I think we have to look through. Back below deck, there's the small task of sorting through the muddy contents of the net and getting to know my new crewmates. Now, the skipper, um, Gary, he's your uncle. Yep, he's my uncle. And you're, so he says that his brothers, so your father, is also a, a he's, fisherman. He's a fisherman as well. Is that a strange dynamic, fishing with your father, or is it something you've always done, so it's...? Uh, not really, it's just, it's just something, uh, it's something you get used to. You don't really mind, you just think of them as your boss. To please the boss, we're going to need to do better than this. That's what we're after. That's what we're after. There's not enough there to make a prawn cocktail. Look at that, they really are like tinker. It really is like yeah, in a comic book. Yeah, when the nets come back empty like this, the finger often gets pointed at the new boy on board. No, I thought we was going to have to take you back to the harbour. Oh, really? Sorry, Ben, no. Oh, uh, what, because I'm bringing bad luck? You're unlucky. It's not been a good start to my time on board Pleiades. While many people have left the office, they're at home tucked up in front of the television, maybe watching this, this is what's going on out in the North Sea. Spend a couple of days out here and you'd completely forget what, uh, what day of the week it is. It wouldn't be long before you forgot what month it was. Hard-working fishermen go way back in Gary's family. So this is a family tradition for you? Oh, yes. yes. Father? Yes. Grandfather? Yes. Great-grandfather? Yes. Wow, and it keeps going back, does it? Probably does, yes. Wow. Right. Gary got this boat just five years ago, an event he said was as exciting as his wedding day. But he's one of the few skippers who have stayed in the industry. When I started, there were maybe 20 or 30 boats working in those areas, and now we're maybe down to six, seven. People take the simpler option and move somewhere else. Oil? Oil. 
Has that uh, affected a lot of the fishermen here? Oh yes, definitely, them? definitely. Good money on the oil rigs and government restrictions on how long these boats can spend at sea has drawn many fishermen away. And with every empty or torn net, you can see why the rewards are hard to come by in this difficult job. 32 hours into our voyage, there's another snag in the plan that costs Gary more fishing time and money. Now we're having to haul a bit early because we think we've broke something. Might be a sweep, might be a wire. You've also got to worry that you break your second sweep and lose your net. Lose your net, lose your catch. And that's maybe two, three thousand pounds. And a catch, maybe five, six hundred pounds. So, quite a lot at stake. What if I don't deserve this? How's it looking, Gary? It should be a quick fix, but I know it's a torn bit in the wing, so. It might be a bit more than we think. The nets become snagged on the seabed, with the force tearing right through an inch-thick metal cable. If you want to see uh, the power, look at that. It's an overnight fix. I'm sharing the crew's desperate disappointment and hoping the trip will turn around for them, but so little is in their hands. Daylight brings yet more problems. Something has uh, got stuck in the nest and closed it. This could have lost us one of their uh, their daytime walls, which are pretty valuable, really. I'm thinking it's probably just mud that we've picked up. We're working with quite a lot of weight, a lot of weight in this situation. There's another tense moment as 275 metres of chains and nets are hauled back to the surface. Keep your eyes open for any damage to the net. Could have been a stone, could have been a piece of wire. Mending time again. <laughs> You're going to have spent more time sewing than fishing. I think a seeing person would have been off his head long by now. After the bounty of fish delivered by the Rose Bloom, this trip is a reality check for me. Gary needs prawns in the nets to get money to run the boat and pay the crew. The crew has to get a pay from somewhere this week. So where does that come from if we don't catch anything? Well, someone else has to do without. Either the boat share or... We've always got a bit put aside for a rainy day, so... We've had a whole week of rainy days this week. The only thing keeping spirits up is dinner. And what else would be on the menu except fish and chips? But not everyone on board seems to be a fan. I just started eating fish about three, four years ago. You didn't eat it before? I didn't like fish before that. You're joking. No. Why? I'd never tried it. Your father was a fisherman. Uh -huh. You've got three brothers who are fishermen. Right. And you've never tried it. I'd never tried it before, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's bed and rest, and I'm hoping for Gary's sake we get a fresh start tomorrow. Good night. Waking at dawn, the net's fixed and in the ocean. It seems like a good day for fishing. But after all our problems, it's an act of God that's the final straw bringing our voyage to an end. I'm looking at the weather forecast and I think we'll just call it a day. Enough's enough. And uh, we'll have this haul. Hopefully we'll get some prawns, but either way, we're out of here. Well, so a lot of money riding on that potentially. If, I mean, if you, if you get a bumper haul, you'll be a happy man. It'll need to be a good haul. It'll yeah. need to be a big one. Yeah. No, what we get is what we get. As the sun goes down on my last day on board Pleiades, it's time for that crucial last haul. Could it possibly turn our voyage around? We've had three difficult days fishing on board Pleiades. Our nets were ripped apart, leading to a through-the-night repair operation. 
Stormy weather ahead means we could be heading home with little to show for all our efforts. This is the last throw of the dice as we haul for prawns one final time. It looks a bit heavy. Maybe, maybe not. It looks like we won't be going back empty-handed after all. At last, our luck has changed, meaning Gary's got a fighting chance of at least breaking even. Right, off to do some processing. I'm not a born fisherman, but after all the setbacks this week, I can see why the crew get so excited when the nets come in full. Yeah, it's a good haul. It's probably the best haul of the week, the last one. It's just, it's just exciting in general. You know you're... You're on your way home. With something to show for three days of hard work, we can head back to dry land with our heads held high. So what do you think, Ben? Is that a bit better this time? I'd say there's a, a few more this time, Skipper. As it stands, we've got something for our day. Persisting, flogging a dead horse. That's what it's all about. <laughs> As we steam home, I have one more question for Gary. So do you become a fisherman or are you born a fisherman? I think it's to be in you. I think it's to be in you. It's maybe a silly gene in the family. <laughs> a we brave should... gene, I think. <laughs> it's more than just money. It's more than just a job. It's what do you do, someone might ask you. It's not your job you're declaring, it's your it's life. It's who you are. It's what I, it's what I am. Riding home ahead of the storm, we're on our way to harbour. We unload 45 boxes of prawns, worth around £5,000, and they'll be on their way across Europe within 24 hours. Thankfully, it's turned out to be an unexpectedly good end to the trip. Oh, well, Ben. Oh, listen, That's thank you. you so much. That's no been problem. an amazing, no, amazing no experience out there. Now we'll see you again, OK? Absolutely. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you. Bye. We've landed our catch in Fraserburgh, 17 miles up the coast from Peterhead. And there's another very different type of North Sea fishing that takes place from here. Crab fishing boats have sailed from Fraserburgh Harbour for centuries. But today, there are only a handful left. One of the boats is run by John Alexander. He's been a solo crab fisherman for 12 years. That's a lot of crab sent from the North Sea to all over the UK. John? Hey, this is the right. You're John, are you? Yes. I'm Ben. You're Ben, yes. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome so this is the boat I'm going out on today. This is the boat. It's a way to get a bit of punishment for the day. She's got a bit of punishment. There's no hanging about. We sail at 8 a.m. so John can make full use of the daylight hours ahead. To earn a decent wage for the day, he's looking to catch the best part of half a ton of crabs. From Fraserburgh, we travel 15 miles into the North Sea to one of John's favourite fishing grounds. When I was out on the Rose Bloom and I told the crew I was coming out with you, they all said that. I would never catch them working on a boat like this. It's far too dangerous. I don't know how to answer that because it is a dangerous job. At 10 metres, the Chloe May is less than half the size of the trawlers I've been on so far. John used to work on the fishing trawlers until he decided he wanted to be his own boss. But his is a very risky business. You're missing a finger. I Sorry, did. I didn't mean to point that out, but you, I think you showed that to me. Is that, is that lost here? That's here. Was it? No. I did nigging into it. I actually just went and dark with it, and the rope just sliced off and flashed off with it. And what I do into the hollow. Anything that goes in there, you can pick off the deck when you're finished. So, simple as that, so stay away from it. Yeah. The thing is, never put your back to the rail. Never put my back to the rail. Why because is that? If, if you start the stumble, you kind of stop yourself falling backwards. 
Is that my safety uh, introduction? It's your safety introduction. You don't stay, touch this. Stay away from no the No back to the rail and don't go near the pots at the back while yes. we're working. That's exactly right. John has previously left long chains of big baskets called creels deep on the seabed. The crabs crawl into the baskets and can't get back out again. 47 fathom. 47 fathom and one fathom is six feet? Six feet, aye. Now it's time to bring the creels back on board. That is the book. Here's the first one. Sounds a stupid question. Do they not bite you as you take them out? If you give them half a chance, they will bite you. But it's as simple as that. So now it's your turn. There's no much time to get fed up, is there? No, you're, it's like non stop. John's often out on his own, seven days a week from dawn until dusk. Working alone is dangerous, but it's the only way John can earn enough to make it worthwhile. A decent haul of crabs might earn him around £700, but that's definitely danger money. It's pretty physical, this. If you lose your concentration for a second, you know, you're going to go... Well, you're going to fall or you're going to go overboard. But, you know, for John to do this on his own out here, just an incredibly physical, dangerous job. If an accident happened while John was alone at sea, or if one of the waves knocked him overboard, there's literally no one to save him. I mean, I've done some stuff in my time, but it has to be said, working the ocean, the farmers out here, in the North Sea, for another breed. Now it's my turn to get hands on with the crabs. Do I, here it comes, here it comes. Do I just need to, look, bloody hell, there's a lot of crabs in here. Come on, let go. Watch, let your, go. watch your fingers Whoa, in. Whoa, yeah, he was going for me. Watch this, this is a lobster. What are you doing with this one? This is a massive pink one. Nice, Ben. That's again the lake. Oh, you must be bringing a bit of luck today. This is, I assume this is a good haul. The fishing's good. And that's another lobster. John's always pleased to see the lobsters, as each one is worth seven times as much as a crab. You're a crewman, you're supposed to do the work. <laughs> what, what am I supposed to do, Jess? Keep it close. Oh. Then I stick your finger in them. I'm trying to tape a lobster, apparently up and down. With my lobster tied up and the hard work done, there's finally time to answer a call of nature. So, John, this might seem a silly question, but is, is there a loo on board? There's one big loo. <laughs> it's all round about you. You can take your pick. Over the side? Over the side. Now that's easier said than done. Nice. Oh, I feel better now. It's been a good day's work. As we turn for home, we've got half a ton of crabs ready to be sent south to market. Have you ever been to London? Have you ever seen where your crab goes? No, I've seen for about the last five years I've been getting to go down to Billingsgate Market and see them actually been sold, but I still haven't got there yet. You haven't? No. Getting a couple of days off, off. yeah. Isn't a proof a bit too easy? And how much longer do you think you'll carry this on for? Probably as long as I can stand. <laughs> Couldn't imagine myself working in an office or nothing like that. But it is just in the blood and it's a way of life and I would miss it. 
Sometimes I think I would now, but I know I would. <laughs> As the lights of Fraserburgh come into view, they herald the end of my journey as a North Sea fisherman. Stay safe. I don't think I'm cut out to be a fisherman, but then what I could see the romance out there. I could see that, that beauty of being close to the ocean, to the elements, harvesting the sea. I may have been sick as a dog at times, cold, wet, tired, and missing home, but I survived. And I've come out with a newfound respect for the North Sea fishermen, the last true hunters in Britain. I have to say, these are hard-working guys. We certainly reap the benefits of what they catch. Think about that the next time you eat your fish and chips. And I'm looking forward to a full night's sleep.